The gentleman from Maryland is yielded time. Thank you kindly, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank the distinguished gentleman from New York for his uh, excellent uh, leadership uh, on this bill today on the floor. The distinguished gentlelady from Colorado posed a question that I've been hearing my Republican colleagues uh, utter over the last several days. Who decides what is true or false? How can we know what is true or false? And the gentlelady confided her fear that the federal government would end up defining what's true or false. Well, my, 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 that's an absolute assault on the Constitution of the United States because we have an entire federal judiciary which is based on people getting up in court and swearing an oath under God or the Constitution to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the whole point of what federal courts do is to determine what's true and what's false. And yet now we have an entire political party which is organizing itself around this radical moral agnosticism, claiming that there's no way we can know the difference between whether an election is on Tuesday or whether an election is on Thursday, as Vladimir Putin wants to tell us through his sinister propaganda put out by the Internet Research Agency. The whole judicial system is based on the difference between truth and lies. In fact, the administrative system, you want to get Social Security, either you're 65 or you're not. That's a matter of positive fact. You qualify for Medicare or you don't. Truth or fact. Yes, our system operates on the basis of truth or fact. Don't throw up your hands and say, oh, well, we can't know what the truth is. We can't know what lies are. We don't want bureaucrats telling us what that is. That's what democratic government is. That's how we operate, by our commitment to the truth. And that's why we all swear an oath here to uphold the Constitution. That's why people go to court and they swear an oath to tell the truth. Now, they take their shocking nihilism about what's true and what's false, and they convert it to this entire Congress. And it all starts, of course, with January 6th. And before that, the presidential election. All starts with a big lie, Donald Trump's big lie. Well, they say, well, who knows? Maybe he won, maybe he didn't. You say Joe Biden's president, we say Donald Trump's president. Nonsense. 60 federal and state courts rejected every claim of electoral fraud and corruption that they put forward. 60 federal and state courts rejected every claim. They don't have a single court that ever ruled in their favor. Donald Trump lost that election by more than 7 million votes, 306 to 232 in the Electoral College. So then their big lie now has to stretch all the way over January 6th. We have to disbelieve the evidence of our own eyes, of our own ears. We saw them come and descend upon this chamber, this Congress, wounding and injuring 150 of our police officers, breaking people's noses, breaking people's fingers, putting people in the hospital. And already they're back on the news with big lies saying, no, 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 it was a tourist visit. Like these real tourists up here who have to come and watch representatives in the United States Congress say there's no difference between truth and lies. Real tourists who are not beating the daylights out of our police officers. Now, so the lie now extends to January 6th. Who knows what really happened? Yeah, we all saw it. We saw the Vice President of the United States getting chased out of the chamber with people yelling, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence. We had a bipartisan committee for a year and a half with more than 1,000 witnesses, 100 subpoena witnesses under oath, most of them from the Trump White House and the Trump family and Republicans testify about Trump's plan to overturn the presidential election and get Pence just to install him in office, and yet they're agnostic about, well, the truth and lies. Who knows what really happened? Who knows? 
Yeah, who knows? Well, they've got a perfect bill for you then. We call it the Putin Protection Act. That's what it is, the Putin Protection Act. D distinguished gentleman from New York explained Putin spent millions of dollars in 2016 to pump propaganda, electoral sabotage, into our political system. He did. Every security agency in the country told us that. We got a bipartisan report from the Senate saying it. They're agnostic about it. They, when it comes to Putin, they see no evil, they hear no evil, none of it, no. But we know that it happened, okay? That's Putin's plan. Why? Putin cannot beat America politically. He can't beat us economically. He can't beat us militarily. Putin can't beat us philosophically. There's one thing he's got, the internet. Why? Because we're a wide open country. And so he says, let's take advantage of it. Let's go on their social media platform. We'll put people who oppose Putin on the internet in jail, which they do. If you send a, a tweet against Putin, you're going to jail. You, you put out a tweet against his filthy imperialist war, which some of them support in Ukraine. If you put out a tweet against that in Russia, you're going to jail. But he says, let's take advantage of America's openness. We'll take advantage of them and we're going to put out propaganda. We'll lie about when the election is. We'll say it's on Thursday when it's on Tuesday. We'll tell people to go vote next week, whatever. And that's the genesis of this whole thing. We have our security agencies who alert social media, and they say they're putting up fraudulent information on your platform. And now they come forward and they say, the Democrats are trying to what? Tell the truth not Democrats, the government, our, our paid federal government agencies are trying to tell the social media when foreign malign actors like Russia and China and Iran are trying to interfere in our elections. That's what this is about. Putin Protection Act. They want Putin and Xi to run free over our platforms and then they want to fine federal government employees thousands of dollars if they alert our government to what foreign malign actors are doing. And the whole justification for it is their silly obsession with Hunter Biden's laptop and this New York Post story, which was taken down by Twitter for one day, three weeks before the election, as an exercise of their private decision making. Then Elon Musk buys Twitter and he fires six journalists because they disagree with him, they've got no problem with that because, of course, it's a private entity. They can do whatever they want. They want to fire journalists, they fire them. They want to take a story down for an hour or a day, they can do that. And then they want to turn that into the basis for handcuffing the entire government of the United States so we can't protect ourselves against Vladimir Putin and President Xi. Give me a break. I yield back.